Hello, everyone, and welcome to August Leadership Academy Short Takes Reviewing Financial Reports. Unfortunately, when we did the original recording, I had a blooper. I forgot to hit record right away. And so I'm just re recording the first intro portion of the Leadership Academy short take, and then we will jump into the recording. Um, fortunately, we only missed the first few minutes of that webinar. So, without further ado, though, we will jump into the Leadership Academy short takes reviewing financial reports. Before we get started, I am going to go ahead and just review a couple resources available to Soil Conservation District employees and supervisors across the state. As a general reminder, these are the folks associated with NDSU Extension that are here to help. You know, starting with, my name is Hannah Nordby. I am the Area 5 Program Coordinator for Conservation Leadership and Planning. Other folks that we have on our team include Amber Fetch. She is the Administrative Assistant for Leadership and Civic Engagement, along with the Soil, State Soil Conservation Committee. Andrea Bowman and Joey Bruins also support soil conservation districts across the state. So these are the faces that are here to help you all and help answer some of your questions. You know, if we don't have the answers, we are more than happy to reach out and find those answers for you. Um, I wanted to highlight just a couple other resources that we provide to soil conservation districts. The first one being our Soil Conservation District Resource Google Drive. When we send out the recording, you'll be able to see that link there. You can also find it on our NDSU webpage. But um, on the Soil Conservation District Google Drive, we have all sorts of different resources available to folks um, depending on various different areas. This is, is also where you can go to view previous training. And so we click on recorded training videos. And then you can see there's access to our podcast episodes, Leadership Academy short takes, the Leadership Academy micro lessons that we will start sending out this fall again. And then there's just a couple of recordings from past association convention meetings. So that's one way that you can access recorded training videos. Another way of access, accessing past training videos is by going onto the NDSU Extension YouTube page. If you click on the video portion and you scroll down, you can see all the different um, leadership academy webinars and videos that we have done over the course of the last couple of years and everything. We try to brand them so that they're pretty easy for you to identify. Um, some of them are kind of clumped together. For example, um, we have um, our short takes are clumped together here. Um, there's some of our past webinars and some of the past Leadership um, Academy short takes. So just take a look there. Um, without further ado, I will introduce our speaker for today. Her name is Pearl, and she is from the State Auditor's Office. We are so fortunate to have Pearl joining us today, sharing about financial reports that solo conservation districts should be reviewing on a monthly basis that all compile into that annual audit that we all soil conservation districts have to do. As a general reminder, um, Pearl during her presentation will be referencing that financial report form quite a bit. And you can find that report form by um, looking up, you know, financial report forms, state auditor's office, um, and we will try to include those links in the emails that we send out and maybe in the descriptions of the videos and everything. But here is what she will be referencing and talking about, um, just so you can kind of keep that in mind. And so yes, here's that financial report that everyone has to complete at the end of the year. Alrighty, awesome. Well, 
again, thank you for joining us. I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of our training and we all enjoy Pearl's presentation. She did a phenomenal job. That means that, that means that your that means that your report would be due in the next year. So from January 1st, 2024 to December 31st, 2024. If it's not submitted by January 2025, after in the 2025 year, it will be considered a delinquent report. On this report, receipts are itemized by receipt type. So the receipt source is going to be your clue for where to enter it on the annual finance report form. So if you receive general property taxes, that would go in the tax section on the form. <clears throat> if you receive grant funding or federal government funding, that would go in the intergovernmental section. The disbursements on the annual financial report form are itemized by the activity. So if it's payroll or governing board, that would go into the general government section. For soil conservation districts, as most of the expenses that you will have are going to be related to soil conservation, most of those expenses are going to go down into the category of conservation of natural resources. This form is filled out on a cash basis, which means that the fund balance needs to equal the bank balance. There are no accounts receivable or accounts payable that need to be included, so it's, it simplifies it by quite a lot. The receipts and disbursements are, are recognized when they're received or paid out, meaning that when it comes out of the bank account, that's when it's recognized. When it goes into the bank account, that is when it's recognized and reported. On the form, there is a long-term debt tab where you can record the long-term debt of your district. And you can put the type, if it's a loan or a bond, the institution, the purpose of the debt, the original amount, and the balance amount. And like I said earlier, the credits to the bank accounts are your receipts and your debits are disbursements for a cash basis report. Moving on to the receipt and disbursement types. Common receipt types that we see in soil conservation districts include general property taxes, rents, loans, grants, tree planting services, sale of assets, interest, donations. And the bottom line is that anything deposited into your bank account is a receipt. On the disbursement side, common disbursements are payroll equipment purchases such as grass seed, weed barrier, trees, inventory, repairs and maintenance, education, insurance, utilities, loan payments. Most other expenses for a district, those will be miscellaneous and belong in the general government, all other section. Common fund types that we see in soil conservation districts. Every district is going to have a general fund, and this is used to record all activities that are not associated with special purposes. So this is where your governing board payroll would go. Most of the payroll would belong in the general fund. And this is where your general property taxes would go as it's a general activity. And a special that another common fund type is a special revenue fund. This fund is used for all fund type for funds that are legally restricted, whether it be it's by North Dakota Century Code or federal or by board action. Board action meaning that the board makes a decision to put funds aside for a specific purpose. It goes into that special revenue fund and it can only be spent for that purpose. Another common fund type is a capital project fund. <clears throat> These are funds that are used to construct major, major capital assets. The examples of those could be buildings or tree coolers. And you only need a capital project fund if the project lasts longer than a year or if it takes longer than a year to save up the funds for a project. If you know that you're going to need to expand and build another building, that's something where you could start saving up money five years beforehand. So you create that capital project fund, you put funds in that fund, you know they're reserved, they're not in the general fund, and those funds can start to build up. And the last common fund type that we see are debt service funds. This is a fund that is used for payment of principal and interest of a district's debt. And you would only need a debt service fund if it takes longer than a year to pay off. So if you have a loan that you take it out and you pay it off within a year, that's fine. That can stay in the general fund. 
but if it's a loan that lasts longer than a year, it would need to go into a debt service fund so we can keep track of how much is being paid down that loan. So common mistakes that we see on the annual financial reports, a big one is in inaccurate record of transactions resulting in large adjustment amounts in basic reviews. This is going back to that fund balance equaling the bank statement balance. So your total receipts at year end need to equal your total credits. And if there's a large adjustment amount there, then we know that something is something is not quite right. And same that's the same as for the disbursements and for the debits on the bank statements. Reporting office expenses, advertising, and immaterial amounts in detail. We don't need to know that you spent $100 in stamps. You know, put it in the general government, the all of the general government disbursements. That line item exists on the disbursement side and as a miscellaneous category for a single. So if you have a single disbursement that is less than 10% of total disbursements, then that can be put into the all other general government disbursement category. Another common mistake is bank accounts are not funds and you do not need to have a bank account for each fund that you have. If you have two funds, a general fund and a, um, and a capital project fund, as long as the funds don't have any rule saying that they need to be in a separate bank account, it can all stay in the same bank account and be paid out there. And it just simplifies things for you doing bank reconciliations and for us when we're going through and trying to figure out if there are any discrepancies. Reporting capital projects and special revenue and debt service in general fund. So this would be if we were to see a big, a large sum of 400,000, 500,000 in construction contractor payments. That could be a tip off that you guys are building something or if there is a big, a large amount in loan or bond payments, um, or if there's a big difference from the year before and there's a new activity that's popped up, that could be an indicator that there is a special revenue activity going on in the district. If you have, a, if, if you have an embezzlement concern, so there are a few things that you can watch for, um, a big one being checks written to cash. Cash is a hard thing to keep track of, and you don't want to have you don't want to have the main um, mode of purchasing being cash. So you're going to want to use checks mainly. Um, another thing is items purchased for personal use. Uh, this could be stamps, envelopes, garbage bags. Um, really, it could be anything that is purchased at Walmart, Amazon, Menards, or anything that isn't detailed, you know, on a receipt. Another thing is checks written to self. I know that on um, the, the Soils Conference Conservation Districts that a lot of you wear a couple different hats that you might be an accountant, an auditor, but you also might be working with conservation related things as well. But just make sure that if you, those checks are, if you do have to write a check to yourself that you have another, a different signature on it. Cash receipts not deposited. So if you have cash that you're depositing, use a receipt book so you have a record of you have a record of that transaction and you have proof that it did go into the bank. What to do if things don't look right? Call our office. We're here to help you and we're here to figure out what's going on or if we can't help you direct put you in the right direction. Um, and when you're looking at the annual financial report, and you can look, you can check for a few things to make sure that it looks accurate. You can check to make sure that your book balance, your accounting book balance equals the bank balance, and that that equals that on the on the annual financial report form. That funds are used correctly with accounting standards, meaning that you have a special revenue fund if you need it, or you have a debt service fund or a capital project fund. You have those types of activities in your soil conservation district. And look for <clears throat> negative fund balances. If there's a negative fund balance on the annual financial report, this could be that this could mean that you need to make a transfer from your general fund at year end, or potentially in the next year increase your revenues. So not only is it for accountability and transparency in reporting to our office, but it can help you make those financial decisions in the soil conservation districts. 
and make sure if you have two different if you have more than one fund and you're and there are transfers that those transfers balance and match and that you can see which funds they're going from and coming from and going to <clears throat> now if things don't look right on an annual financial report and it's submitted to our office, we do have a process called the extended review, which is like a mini audit, but it's much more cost effective than an audit. And it takes a further look into receipts and disbursements, just making sure it will verify that the receipts that you have listed have some documentation supporting it. And that those expense, those disbursements that you have, that those were made for the purposes of the district. If there is a construction project, if there's a big jump in um, construction construction payments from the year before, we're going to ask for bid documentation to make sure that the project was um, bidded out properly. And then we might take a look at payroll or transfers. If the, if you have too many transfers, we can't see where we don't know where they're going to and where they're coming from, or there are multiple transfers within the year. That's something that we're going to want to verify. And the budget as well is another thing that we take a look at. <clears throat> Things that can trigger this extended review: unreported data. This could be fund. Um, uh, this could be on the fund side of things. So it could be in your general fund, or this could be on the bank accounts. If there's a big discrepancy between your year-ending fund balance and your bank balance, it could be possible that maybe you missed a CD that's throwing off that balance. Or maybe it's, um, maybe you missed something, or maybe there was something you didn't think you had to record, or it didn't belong on this report. But again, anything that goes into the bank account or comes out of the bank account needs to go on the report. Fund types used incorrectly. If we see that, if we see a large loan payment, and it lasts for longer than a year, that would mean that you know, you have you have a debt you have debt service going on, and you need a debt service fund for that. If there are suspicious expenditures or disbursements, or too many miscellaneous disbursements, something like if you have an amount of fifty thousand dollars in all other public works, which is a miscellaneous category, that's something that could potentially trigger an extended review, or we would ask for that to be itemized. Those excessive transfers, if you have excessive transfers that don't balance or there are too many miscellaneous transfers, that also is something that we're going that we would want to check into. And while I'm talking about transfers, if you do have bank accounts, multiple bank accounts, and you make a transfer to or from a bank account, that's not something that needs to be recorded on the transfers part of the fund or, or of the annual financial report because that is a bank transaction only. And if you put it into, if you put it onto the annual venture report, it would be inaccurate. Another thing that can trigger an extended review is if a material adjustment is needed. If there is, if we need to adjust for over 10%, if we need to make an adjustment of over 10% or of more than 10% of total receipts, then that's an indicator that there's likely something that's just missing. You know, maybe you forgot, like I said, maybe you forgot to include some funds or it could be anything. Checks and balances. So this is really important because your month, to, your day to day activities build up to the months and then the months build up to the year. And that's what encompasses the annual financial report. So it's important to be doing those monthly bank reconciliations, making sure that your bank balance, which is your fund balance, and your plus your reconciling items equal, or sorry, your book balance, which is your fund balance, plus the reconciling items equal the bank balance. And these monthly bank reconciliations should be done in a timely manner for fund balance accuracy, just so you know that you, what you have is accurate. And if something is wrong, you can go and try and find it. And reviewing the monthly statement of activities, your total receipts, which are your revenues, those should equal the total bank statement credits. Your total disbursements, which are the expenses, those should equal the total bank statement debits. And your month ending total book balance, your fund balance should equal your total bank statement balance. 
All transactions should be verified during board meetings. So all the payments that go out, those should be verified during those board meetings. The expected deposits are that those are received and those should be kept track of. And just keeping sequential check numbers. If you have check numbers that go 40, 55, 72, you know, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if you have those sequential check numbers, you can see that things are going out when they need to and you can keep better track of where your finances are at. Another thing is proper documentation. Not only should receipts and all invoices be kept, but it should also be recorded in one place with the invoice, invoice receipts and invoices to support what is listed. So if when we're going through your extended your your annual financial report, if we see something that we want to ask, what was this for? Then you can pull up the amount and you can say, here it is, and here's the support. I have it right here. And just note that these practices are not only for accountability and transparency, but they're also for the benefit of you guys, the employees. Good accounting and financial practices can prevent a big headache from happening a year later when questions are being asked and you need to go digging for transactions that happened over a year ago. So accessing and help with the form, the, the link to the form is listed on our website under the local government reports tab under subcategory form. And if you have any questions about it, call our office and ask to speak with the Office of Good Government and we're gonna, we'll, we will help you out. And if I don't know the answer to a question, I will find out, I will find the answer and we'll figure it out and we'll set, we'll get you in the place that you need to be with the form. And just please note that if you don't, you don't need to remember this information, this is meant to be a high level overview. And if you have questions, we do want you to contact us. So don't ever be afraid to, it doesn't matter what question is, no question is a dumb question, call our office. And my, and my contact information is listed here on the last side. And now we should have some time for Q&A if anybody has questions. Awesome, <laughs> sorry, frog in my throat. Awesome job, Pearl. I'm just going to go ahead and pop into the chat a link um, to that website that Pearl just mentioned, um, as well as links to our um, YouTube and the Google Drive as well that we mentioned earlier. Are there commonly asked questions that your office gets when it relates to these um, annual financial reports, or did you cover most of them during um, during your presentation, Pearl? I would say a common question that I've been asked lately is about fund types and making, especially the, the capital project funds. That's one that I've been hearing a lot lately. It's, it's, that's, that's what I've been, it's just that you make sure that you have those fund types kept separate if you have those kind of activities going on in your district. Thanks for all the great information, Pearl. I think, um, you know, one thing you said really kind of stood out to me. I think people get overwhelmed sometimes with this report, especially we have um, staff changes a lot in districts. Um, and I think I think it's important to remember that it's it's there for accountability. Like, um, and so it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing for staff and it's a good thing for boards. And I think, um, I really heard you say, you know, like it starts with daily activities and how you're tracking that and then moves on into, you know, those turn into months. So I think really districts just really encourage them to look at, you know, what are, what reports are they looking at at their meetings? Um, like, is there certain reports you recommend that they pull for review that help, you know, with this final report at the end? Um, kind of maybe a best practices from some of the, what you see some of the districts doing? The statement of activities is a big one because the statement of activities should show what you have, you know, going on in that entire year. And that's going to show your total receipts and your total disbursements. And that's the biggest thing is, you know, your 12 months of bank statements. If you total all the, you know, credits and debits up, that should equal what you have on your 
book balance. So it, it's not necessarily that there's really a certain report that you should be printing to look at because there are all sorts of different reports that a lot of the accounting systems um, can print off. So, yeah. Okay, well, I think if there aren't any other questions from folks, I'm not seeing anything in the chat box or anything like that. We will be sending out this recording in about a week, and we will make sure to include Pearl's contact information along with all the different links that we mentioned during today's webinar. And thank you again so much, Pearl, for taking time to share your expertise with us. And hopefully this can be a great resource and contact for soil conservation districts across the state. Because even if you don't have a question today, doesn't mean that something might not pop up in the future. So thank you. We really, truly appreciate it. Yes, you guys are a great audience. Thank you so much for having me. It was wonderful.